There you go, we are here. Hello everyone, uh, this is Vanessa from uh, Humans of Beekeeping. I am the founder of Humans of Beekeeping. If you guys don't know what is Humans of Beekeeping, where well, you're missing out on something already. <laughs> Humans of Beekeeping, it's some um, a foundation that I started uh, talking about different um, background in beekeeping. And today I have Elisa from Pure and Local from Western Australia. Welcome, Elisa. Hello. Hi. Tell us a bit more about you, please. Uh, so I'm in yelling up in southwest West Australia. Um, I've been beekeeping for about eight years and my husband's granddad taught me how to beekeep. That's how I got started. Wow. Um, yeah. So he and he um, was about. 80 when he started teaching me um and his father had taught him as a little boy when he was about 11 so um yeah that's i love that, that that's how we got into it um so i've since since jim got me started um i've been i started with one hive and um i'm now running about 20 of my own and another 20-ish for, for uh, customers that I do um, management, on-site management for some farms and, and just for some consulting for individuals and wow, uh, yeah, lots of um, beginners classes as well. Yes, I've seen that you do a lot of beginners classes. How does it go? How do you like it? Is there a lot of people like where you live that actually are interested into uh, beekeeping? Yeah, yeah. So um, last season was the first season that I ran classes um, I think I probably had about 80 students over that season wow. um, this one numbers are down I, we had to cancel a lot before Christmas because the weather just stayed cold and rainy mm. <laughs> for so long so, and thunder and all sorts of things that you can't take people out in for their first experience so it's got to be nice <laughs> I can't um can't take them out there when the thunder's building up. No. And, um, well, that's <laughs> really good. you. You actually do give people workshops with hands-on experience. Yes. Yeah. So we spend about yeah. So we spend about uh, two two and a half hours having some nice morning tea, some honeycomb and cheeses, and and then going running through. Um, we do biosecurity and rules and regulations and a bit of um, hands-on with the tools and hive design and um, brood identification, things like that. And then we go out and we spend a good, probably a couple of hours usually moving from hive to hive and nice. put them into little groups of, groups of three and and um, and we open up the hives and have a good look in there. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. That, that's great. Uh, that's, that's something, you guys, I will put down in the comment below for you to have a look at because, you know, if you are from Western Australia and you're close by to Elisa, yeah, and you want to learn the best thing is to actually yeah go and have a hands-on experience uh, with bees. Okay, so you say that you uh, teach people, but you know you say that uh, your father-in-law was it? Yeah. Sorry, your father-in-law started you with beekeeping. Uh, my my grandfather-in-law, Jim. Yeah, so he started. Um, yeah. But and you, um yeah so he <laughs> yeah what was the thing that got you to say i want to learn this oh do you know it was um it was actually one of my one of my best friends she was a she sort of was getting a bit interested and she said oh would you ask jim one day just ask him some questions about beekeeping for me and you know whether i could come and have a look and so i started talking about it with him and then that was it. I just couldn't. couldn't stop. <laughs> yeah, so um, I helped. Um, and yeah, I, I helped him for about a year before I got my first hive, and then, um, and then, and then as he, so he passed away last year, but he had some um, injuries and things, and so he finally let me work on his hives for him. You know, when he was about eighty-eight. <laughs> Yeah, wow. but he just been his whole life. Mm, that's that's awesome. It's like you know, there's always one little thing that's gonna get you started, and this this time was your friend. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> awesome. And I love it. And Jim saw me start teaching my kids, which are his great grandkids. So, been. Oh, that's lovely. That's something, that's a skill that has been passed on in the family. That's that's yeah. quite special. It is like, it is very mm -hmm. special. Um, now, obviously, you had someone to teach you uh, to, you know, look after the bees and do the thing the right way. Uh, what do you have as an advice to new beekeepers or people that are thinking about doing beekeeping? or, you know, keeping bees into the backyard or in wherever they want to keep them. Obviously, I think it's a great idea to do a class. Um, <laughs> but also, um, you know, join a local beekeeping club if there's one near you. Um, and just, I think, before you get your bees, just read as much as you can. Just read, read, read and talk to so many different people um, and... So you could seven every question. So as long as you, as long as what you decide falls within the regulations of um, biosecurity and and managing a healthy hive, then you just take what you what works for you from everyone's advice and and run with that. I think. Um, yeah. I think is is there a lot of clubs around where you are? Uh, yeah, there's a couple um, sort of within half an hour drive either way. There's a couple, one or two. And then there's a big club in Perth, which is our capital city. So, yeah, there's a big there's a big network up there. Um, but our mug class is really fantastic. We've just been given a site um, on the local high school grounds to have mm -hmm. run some teaching hives. So wow. that's really cool, yeah. That's quite cool. That's quite cool. That's great from a schooler. I mean, <laughs> they've got a great ag department um, and or ag teacher, and so at some stage you'll be able to get students, the ag students involved as well. Oops, I've got that tree sign. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> I think we'll be all right for a bit longer. <laughs> Okay, good, perfect. <laughs> well, you, you know, you, you know, you. So you're from Western Australia, and you do everything. You know, um, I know that the rules in Western Australia is like a bit different from any other states. But you're not allowed to actually bring honey or bring any bees from Western Australia. Why is this? Yeah. Can you tell the viewers? Uh, yeah. So in WA, there's um, some pests and diseases that we don't have that uh, that the eastern states. Um, and South Australia do have. Um, we don't have small hive beetle mm -hmm. um, and we don't have uh, European, we don't have European fowl brood. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, so, um, but we do have AFB. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so as far as not bringing honeys, wax products and things into the state, uh, the cause of some of these diseases can last for, I don't know, forever. Yeah. Uh, so if they're exposed to our local bee populations, they could take those, you know, they come and eat your your eastern state's honey and, and take it to a hive, a healthy hive, and then all of a sudden we've got a new pest here or disease that we didn't have before. Mm. Um, yeah, but it's still, it's, it's a, it comes up regularly. Um, we had a local guy... And luckily, he just he posted on a, a um, wax products from a, an eastern states company. Mm -hmm. um, so, and he was he was really he didn't realise. So he was really fortunate that he had posted this and it opened up a discussion um, because the the companies um, that they actually. Anyway, no. okay. Uh, you know that story in regard of uh, the viral mites that was found into mm -hmm. someone's apiary. I think was it in Western Australia. Mm -hmm. What do we know about that? I, I haven't followed. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, all I know about that is that it was um, apparently a misunderstanding. Oh. Um, the person who 
who said that that was what it was um, did actually get in contact apparently with the relevant authorities um, and yeah I, I don't know I know that there was a, a big um, investigation in court so all the all the um, active the department deeperd and um, the B industry council got involved in investigating so that they've satisfied themselves that it wasn't actually Baroa. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, pretty, um, it was a big scare, but, um, you know, a false claim like that couldn't really throw a spanner in the works for the yeah. um, industry as well. Definitely. Uh, yeah. so what, what, what's, uh, what's, what's the best moment? Oh, no, wait, I want a bit of fun right now. So can you tell me the funniest moments in your beekeeping journey? I'm pretty sure they will involve things. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, what, was, what happened? I, um, I did a, a cutout out of an a old cottage um, and I left it for a few days sitting to make sure all the bees had, had you know, migrated into the box. And um, I went back in the middle of the night to collect my box and no one was living there um and i'd left you know i'd left home grumpy <laughs> which is always a bad idea um so i left home grumpy and i got to my site grumpy <laughs> and, um, and, I, <laughs> um, and i had to go through this garden to collect the collect the box anyway basically i fell down a hole in the lawn holding a um, holding a brood box <laughs> full of bees <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and I had my suit on so I didn't get stung but I probably deserved to get stung <laughs> I reckon that would have been a uh, comical you know <laughs> I laughed but I also you know was very embarrassed but luckily no one saw we are now we're a nose of it <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, an advice is to everyone listening is don't do beekeeping when you are grumpy <laughs> um yeah what what is um what what do you think you're very good at at beekeeping i think i'm good at making feel people feel comfortable with their beekeeping experiences yeah Mm. I've only had one student who felt a bit overwhelmed and she stood just stood back from the hives while we inspected and that's one person out of probably a hundred and something now. So, I, you know. Mm. That's, yeah. What about, um, what about, what's the worst thing you, you, what do you think you're not good at actually? Um, I'm not good at time management. <laughs> um, and I'm not good at squatting queens. I do it, but I don't like it. <laughs> you do it, but you don't like it. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, you, you, yeah. you do men talk um, to people. Yeah. You, do, you do mentor a lot of people, do you? Yes, yeah, I do. Um, so I, I do a fair bit of, um, it usually starts out with people having been my students and then um, and then I might do a few paid consults and things but I end up doing a lot of um, a lot of mentoring and a lot of um, telephone and email mm. support okay yeah. that's, that's good it's fine you know I love that it's great you know it's, it's all part of all part of it um, and you know beekeeping is not about the money for me i'm not a big enough operation mm. for it to be um you know that i rely on um, so yeah so I, I really enjoy just trying to help more people to feel confident and do beekeeping well mm. um, that's great yeah. um why why did you choose the name pure and local uh no, I had that is not that would be a boring story. <laughs> just it was just I needed a name. I think <laughs> you just needed a name and pure local. Yeah. Remind fair enough. I mean, I like when I hear pure and local for me, I just like relate straight away to honey that is pure and that is local. Yeah, it, and it's what it is. It's raw. Um, it's it's just 
whatever is flowering in our area at the at the time i don't move my hives um and it is local oh it's it's only available within a sort of 50 kilometer radius of of where it's been mm. grown yeah what's the most uh, enjoyable moment in your beekeeping journey what was the most enjoyable moment in your beekeeping journey oh um last year my little boy and i went into his kindy class and we took in our observation hive and our tools and he had on his little suit um and he's a bit of you know a bit, bit more reserved little guy and we stood up in front of the class and i started talking and he took over and mm. he was four and he knew so much and i just really proud moment you know he just, everything he came out with he was right <laughs> you know he had all this knowledge um and just to see him yeah, to know that i've pa i'm passing this on to him the skills of beekeeping but also the, the confidence to to talk about something that he knows about is really cool yes. yeah and i love the little faces when they, when they start to you know they taste the honey and they look in the hives and oh it's just so good yeah do you do you do uh, school uh, school visits with other schools around your area? Yeah, yeah, I've done a few. Um, yeah, so I've got a gorgeous um, observation hive that's you know it's like a six frame. I think it's really pretty. You take that in, and um, everybody loves that. And then I had a local lady um, crocheted me a little life cycle kit as well, and oh. it's the cutest thing. Yeah, um, and I take that in. So that's that's really cool, and the adults love that at my classes as well. It's really sweet. I I need to see that crochet thing. I I, I need something like this. <laughs> I think really really cool. <laughs> cool. Um, I have a question for you. I don't ask many people about it, but I feel like uh, we've talked about it before, and you're okay with the question. Um, what's your position within uh, and your opinion onto the uh, female beekeeping uh, or the female presence in the beekeeping world? Yeah. Um, so I think, so when I started beekeeping eight or nine years ago, I really felt like there weren't many women around sort of on the, especially the hobby beekeeping scale. We've got some some um, big companies in WA that are run by female beekeepers, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I felt like getting information was quite hard. Um, it felt like a bit of a closed thing between the, the old guys. Um, but I've just seen a huge change in the over the last years. Um, by more than 50% of my students are female um, and also so many young kids getting involved as well male and female you know I think it's um, I think that it's the industry is really in the hobby side of it really changing and becoming a, a and it's not something that you need to be a, a big strong male to do you know you can adapt um, the way that you work for lifting different weights um, and working with a team and, and things like that. It's totally doable um, mm. for, you know, Jim was still doing that at 88 um, and my four-year-old can do it too. You know, we can all get involved. I think it's, it's really changing from what I see. Yeah. It, it sounds like uh, you, you bit like, I feel like beekeeping for you, it started with like, it's it's like a family affair and yeah. it's so special. Uh, I don't know, I, I have that vibe of like family with you and I love it. I, I have to say I love it because it's like it's very special. Um, yeah, very special. <laughs> um, what, what did you wish you knew before you started beekeeping? Oh, I wish I knew. Um, <laughs> I wish I knew that it wasn't always easy um, and that it was an expensive hobby. <laughs> um, yeah, I wish I knew how 
obsessed I was going to become. <laughs> I might have started change, setting setting them, some things up in life in my life sooner, <laughs> rather than just kind of going getting snowballing and then suddenly going, whoa, okay, now I've got to rearrange yeah. other, you know, other things that I yeah. don't want to do anymore because I only want to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you do have a job, though, on the side, do you? No, I don't. Um, I, I used to manage medical centres, a lot of admin and human resources and things like that, um, and I'm so glad that I don't do that anymore <laughs> i sat in an office the other day and i just couldn't stand it no <laughs> need to be outside <laughs> yeah and being outside is the greatest uh location you should be i mean there, there is totally coming out of this actually saying that if you are uh, if you are sick or if you're not feeling good or if you're depressed or is there anything wrong like you know within you uh you can be grumpy all you need to do is go and sit down outside and you will feel much better I mean, Absolutely. Nature, so, um, okay, well, that's going to lead me to my last question before your battery just broke. Clack, clack, clack. <laughs> uh, but my last question to you is where do you see yourself and where do you see uh, Pure and Local um, in three years' time? Um, I would love to continue teaching classes. Um, there's a Tasmanian lady beekeeper who runs a, um, runs a group of junior beekeepers i would love to be able to do something like that and just get a heap more kids involved mm. um i'd like to be able to grow um i try and focus on producing honeycomb um so i would like to do more of that um and but i'd like to be able to grow that side of things so that i can perhaps provide um more free um classes and support for things like youth groups and things like that mm -hmm. fantastic yeah. love it thank you so much <laughs> uh thank you so much um if i have missed out something please let me know um right now <laughs> if you want to add something that i didn't ask you about please you know um talk about it now i'll you know uh but i will leave all your details and everything in the comment boxes down uh we have to go down below because apparently everything is down below and the YouTube. <laughs> um but yeah did i miss anything yeah great thank you thanks vanessa that's lovely all right well thank you so much see you guys later bye